Hey YouTube, it's Weird Paul. I've gotten way behind on my mail day videos. I spent most of last year recording my new album, and I was sick for almost all of October, November, and December. So, we're going to catch up completely this year, and I'm going to start off today by showing small things and packages that were sent to me by subscribers or given to me by friends. Some of you may remember seeing the video I made about my first time away from home when I was attending the Recording Workshop Tech School in Chillicothe, Ohio in 1988. Well, the Recording Workshop saw it, and they sent me this t-shirt. When I was on tour, and in Morgantown, West Virginia last year, subscriber GGSI Paper gave me some stuff that mostly relates to my songs. In case of an emergency peanut butter recall, open jar and eat with a spoon. I did, and I didn't even wait for the recall. These are safer than recalled romaine lettuce. I'll vouch for that. Better tasting, too. Oh, uh, yeah, I ate all these, too. Uh, I don't need a lot of candy anymore, so these lasted quite a while. Are these really wine coolers? Sure are, and I like them. I got several macaroni products, pot of macaroni reference noted. Wow, what a meal, Kellogg's Fun Pack 8-Pack. Plus some Scooby-Doo and Shopkins fruit snacks, a 2019 Happy Meal Sandshrew toy, and a Hello Kitty beach ball, successfully working two Weird Paul song references into one item. After a few wine coolers, these will look just fine. Damn! Also got this Side A graphic novel. Wouldn't it be cool to have a Weird Paul comic book? Is this a talking Chuck E. Cheese? Oh no, it's just Buster Moon. <laughs> yeah! up on stage. Oh wow, whistle pops. I forgot these existed. I loved these when I was a kid in the 70s. That gets pretty loud. It tastes just like I remember. And finally, I got this rad Sonny the Cuckoo Bird Cocoa Puffs t-shirt. Yummy! I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs! All right, moving on now. My friend Yo Lighten at the Squirrel Monkey YouTube channel sent me this real, but still worthless, North Korean money. <laughs> One of my young subscribers, Owen Camp, sent his cool CD, Mess Cricket Pops, along with this really neat art. <coughs> Subscriber Bunyula TV sent this cool sticker from their channel. And subscriber Sean Sullivan sent this rockin' VHS tape of the 1988 British comedy Eat the Rich, starring Lemmy of Motorhead. Excellent! Most of you out there probably remember the gaming company TSR as the people who brought you Dungeons and Dragons. But those of you not in the gaming community might be surprised to learn that there is now a new TSR. And TSR sent me one of their latest games, Top Secret New World Order, a new version of the first ever espionage RPG and created by the same man, Merle Rasmussen. Included in the set, of course, are things like the character sheets, the module, and these items which need no introduction. The Death Dog Food Cart is a hearse in Salem, Oregon that sells hot dogs, and they currently have a GoFundMe happening. They sent me Death Dog stickers, a Death Dog magnet and pin, Death Dog after death, uh, I mean after dinner, mints, and even a Death Dog hat. And I got a couple of Death Dog t-shirts. Kevin Holy, who ran the awesome but now defunct music video database, sent his new book, The History of Music Video. Part of it is over 140 memorable stills from videos, and there's also sections on directors and production companies. Subscriber Melmoth sent me this comic book ad for Subway Restaurant's new, at the time, Kids Pack. <laughs> My pal John Marvel Superstar sent a bunch of great stuff we used or ate. I only have one Snickers bar left. Mmm. He also sent this great mix CD, Celebrity Suicide Rock Star Regrets. Subscriber Mike Nobody sent me the first two issues of his zine, The Urban Space Cat. It's a nice insight into the trials and joys of an artist, and has some fun repurposed art. And the accompanying cassette came in some real unique packaging, a net bag full of shredded paper, false teeth, even Polish money. And what's on the cassette is just as unique. Nerdcore rapper MC Lars had me as a guest on his podcast, and he gave me a copy of his vinyl album, The Jeff Sessions, along with the Dewey Decibel System, a 32 gigabyte USB drive featuring over 30 albums released by him and rapper Megaran. 
And he gave me this wicked MC Lars t-shirt. This gigantic robot kills. My friend Greg Sislon gave me 17 Pokemon cards. And Greg's dad gave me this little plastic chip warning of the dangers of lawnmowers. That is wild. Subscriber Ken Palmer sent me a bunch of stuff, including DVDs from the excellent 80s collection, pages from a Star Wars calendar, Toy Story 4 stickers, some funnier die cards and money, and some trading cards including Solo and The Road to WrestleMania. <coughs> Subscriber Shwarma Boy sent me his single This Forsaken Prairie, which is a square lathe cut record on clear vinyl. I think that maybe this Hello Kitty necklace was also sent by him back when I briefly lost my other one, but there was no return address. Here's another box with no return address. Inside I got a Coast Fest 2016 patch, a couple keychains, no place for hate pin, plastic teacup, a 2015 Core Elite figure, a funny little bunny rabbit, and a show po plop smoking poo. Here's a few more things that were handed to me by fans while I was on tour, but unfortunately, I didn't catch their names. An Exorcist keychain, and a Marilyn Monroe money clip, and a nice handmade knitted hat. And these prismatic horror stickers. I absolutely love these. Nightmare. Here's a bunch of other stuff I got from people that I met at my live shows last year. Werfel House gave me this bitch in Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy's Saturday Night Fever design t-shirt at my show in Louisville. Also in Louisville, I saw the band Belushi Speedball. They were great and they threw a ton of these pizza cutters and 1990 NFL Pro Set cards into the audience. Senor Diablo, who was in the band, gave me season three of his YouTube show on DVD. You should check it out on his channel. It's fantabulous. It's amazing. It really is. This is amazing. In Michigan, I got cassettes by the Obscenities, which is raw punk rock, and Just Guys Being Dudes, which is quirky lo-fi. I also got the pin and sticker. And Jacob Reinhardt gave me this shirt for his fun pop punk band, The Stinky Meatballs. Also in Michigan, I got some CDs by the band You Dirty Rat, and if you enjoy ska music, you'll want to check these guys out. In Indianapolis, Sybil Dannon gave me these cool stickers, this funny centipede patch, a really badass pog, and a pin that says, I've switched to the yogurt pump. That's rare. In Morgantown, West Virginia, I got this patch from the band Wax Brain. And Sidney Jackson from the band Roller Ghoster gave me this box of Frankenberry cereal. What a meal! And she drew this Weird Paul fan art. Hey YouTube, it's Weird Paul! In Chicago, Anthony Sabarboro and Sam Moore gave me this little Hello Kitty. And good gosh almighty, another box of Frankenberry! <gasps> Also in Chicago, I got a CD by the band Shoe Bomb that opened for me. And in St. Louis, I got a CD by the band Only Sound. I got a sweet Only Sound t-shirt, too. I did a performance in Erie, PA, and Josh Metz was kind enough to send me the Erie Reader newspaper from that week. They ran a little article on me. I played at the Erie Movie House, and the owner, Craig Stadler, gifted me 17 vintage HBO movie guides. The newest one is from 1987, and the oldest ones are 10 years older from 1977. Back then they were showing comedy specials like Steve Martin on location, and Steve Martin, the funnier side of Eastern Canada. <laughs> Some of the guides even include Cinemax. Ooh, how kinky. Another thing I got in Erie was this CD by Calvin Brown's project, IFHM, called The Gob, and it is rad and noisy. Moving on to the West Coast, when I performed in San Francisco, I got these two CDs by the prolific lo-fi punker Grim Deeds. Every catchy hook you want to hear on these. And in Sacramento, I got a couple CDs by The Four Eyes. One has them doing a whole fake live set where they do the Cheers theme, but they say it's the theme from Coach. And the fashionistas over at Loiter Pit sent me this Loiter Pit t-shirt. Also in the mail I got the CD Total Toxicity by Eric Dingo Reinhardt. And these are all parodies like I Mowed the Lawn to the tune of I Fought the Law. 
Subscriber Jason High sent me a cassette by Portabella, his acid psych punk hippie lo-fi rock band. Yeah, those all apply, and another word that applies is righteous. Jeremy Golden sent me a box of stuff from his label Heaven and Hell Records, including this magnificent shirt. He sent seven CDs on his label. I listened to all of them. My faves were Hellion, White Boy and the Average Rat Band, Chained Lace, and Assassin, a band from Pittsburgh that I used to hear on the radio back in 1986. I totally remembered some of these songs. Uh-oh. Looks like we might have a copyright infringement alert. As a bonus, Jeremy sent two packs of vintage early 80s puffy stickers, Indiana Jones and Lionel Richie, but there is no way that the company in Taiwan that made these did it legally. And finally, when I did my show in Lima, Ohio, I got another weird Paul painting from Daniel Deruta. I think I like this one even better than the first one that he did. It's so cosmic. And finally, Daniel gave me these, and it was on my birthday. These appear to be original unopened packs of Topps Mars Attacks and Monsters from Outer Limits cards, which sold for five cents a pack in the early 60s when they were originally produced. If these are in fact not some kind of reprints, well, I just can't bring myself to open them right now. Thanks to all of you out there who sent in or gave me this stuff. Y'all rock! And if I didn't show what you sent or gave me in today's video, then stay tuned because you're going to see it soon. I put links to all the channels, music, and art from all the people featured in today's video. They're down in the video description, so be sure to check them out. I'll see you soon with more memories. Thanks, YouTube. And we drove and cut the fence as we went through and came out down in Lebanon Junction. And where the, 105, where the truck stop is right now. We stayed there for about two or three days to chase us out of there, and we had going down in town. That was 1937.